What's up, my triple loving YouTube friends? Out in the shop. Got duct tape mic sitting over here. We got an XLT in the shop. Another triple. Surrounded by triples everywhere we look. Triple, 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 triple. Obviously, we love the triples. But we're going to do a stock can versus a trash can comparison here for you guys. So I just started making my first trash can for the XLTs. Our buddy Eric donated an XLT for the cause so we could uh, get a pattern going. So I got the first one built so I can make my fixture. Mike's gonna yank you on the old cord here so we can hear what stock sounds like. And then we're gonna talk about something we just got back in the mail. Well, let's first hear stock. And then while we're talking about what I just got back in the mail, he's gonna swap out the can so we can hear what the trash can sounds like. So we got what stock sounds like. Mike, tell us just a little bit about this sled though. Cause this, is, this hasn't only been in one video so far. I think we barely started it up that one day cause you said, ah, I think we can get it to pop. Let's yeah. see, <laughs> what's the deal with this one? Oh, uh, this was just, it was a basket case that the neighbor had. And he said he was gonna do something with it. And then he came to me, I saw him at uh, where we actually, that auction where we got your Ultra. Oh, Ultra that's right. Redemption. I yep. ran into him out there yep. and he was picking up another Skidoo. He's a Skidoo guy. And, uh, I was giving him a little shit and he says, yeah, he goes, I might need to make room because you might have to come over and check out that XLT because I was bugging him about it before and I said, done, let me know when. So went over there and took a look at it, said, yep, I'll do it, picked it up, brought it home. He said he couldn't get it running, right? And all I had to do was clean the carbs on it. And uh, oh, I had to put a new pickup too, put a different set of bars. Simple stuff, still yeah, yeah, yep, simple but, stuff. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a 96, right? It is a 95, I think. Something, it's an extra 12, yeah. an extra 12 sled. Yeah. Yep, so so the trash can I built for it, when I looked up in a book, it said 94 to 97, I think is what they all said they, they fit. So hopefully that's gonna be the case here. So, but once again, Mike's gonna pull that out. Yeah, one of these pulled out. There's, I'm gonna get one of these, I'm gonna get some sipping because I gotta do some talking here. So I gotta have a wet whistle while I'm talking here. Hold on. Oh. oh, another another good taste of angel piss. Love that stuff. So, talked about on Norge about we had a bearing go bad on it. And we had bearings go bad on Redemption too, but so it was the crankshaft. PTO bearing went out. I called up Northern Crankshaft. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna say a lot about it because I wanted to make sure they had the crank in their hands first. Well, that sounded kind of weird. But anyways, they got the crank in their hands first. <laughs> to take a look at what Who's happened. Yeah. Hey, let's take a look at that trash can, Mike. Well, look at that beauty. Oh, is that thing just gorgeous? All stainless, stainless mounting brackets, stainless pipe everywhere. It'll all be TIG welded. This is just a mock-up can right now. I'm going to take it back apart to get my all my production run pieces mocked off of that can. But that thing is freaking gorgeous. But anyway, so I talked to Northern Crankshafts. Because that's who did the crank originally. Called them up. I'm like, God, you know, we had a crank bearing go out, PTO bearing go out, under 200 miles. Eric up there's like, box it up, send it up. No hesitation. Not a, not even a, nothing. Just box it up so I can take a look and see what happens. What happened to it? I shipped it on a Tuesday. Thursday morning, Eric calls me and says, crankshaft is done. We put two new PTO bearings on. He said something galled the bearing. Don't know what but something did. He said, I inspected all the other bearings on the crank. Everything's good to go. It's in a box heading back your way. I had it Friday afternoon. If that isn't service, I don't know what service possibly could be. That's under a week. That was Thursday and I had it back by Friday. If there would have been snow on the ground to be able to keep riding, that would have been unbelievable service because we would have had the engine put back together and back in the sled by Saturday morning. Trust me, we would have done it. But no hesitations. I paid for the ride up. He even paid for the ride back. That is service. Mike's in the big truck industry. He sells big truck parts. Mike, is that service? That is service. That is service. That's phenomenal. If, service. if a customer requested service like that and you pulled it off, it's how the happy? Kind of service I give my customers. Exactly. And how happy would that customer be? Very, very happy. They keep coming back. Exactly. So I can't say enough about Northern Crankshaft. 
super great guys up there. There was no BS. He didn't try to make up any excuses, just nothing. He just replaced it, shipped it back to me. Couldn't be happier, absolutely cannot be happier. Great guys up there, absolutely great guys. Let's pull the thing out of the box here. Let's take a look at it. Thing is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I think I'm gonna have Mike pull it out of the box. Three cylinder cranks, man, they ain't light. <laughs> they ain't light. Man, is that thing beautiful. Just beautiful. But this is the end that went bad, the PTO end. Two brand new bearings. It just looks gorgeous. Ready to go back in the engine. That will be back together here very, very soon. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It, those guys do phenomenal work. I know Austin Leak uses them also. Um, yeah, me and him were chatting back and forth here not long ago on some messaging, and, and I was talking. About, and I didn't even know he used them. I just said, hey, I couldn't recommend a better shop to do a crankshaft, northern crankshaft. And Austin says, I've been using Northern Crankshaft for years. And he says, fast turnaround, great guys, quality work. And uh, Austin races three cylinders. So he puts these things to the test on a regular basis. And he couldn't recommend them enough either. So I think he even uh, runs a sticker on his sled and stuff. He, he supports them guys greatly. We already done? Yeah. <laughs> well, that didn't take Mike long to throw the trash can in here. All goes into the stock mounting. Use your stock spring that was on your stock pipe. Sits on the rubber mount. I mean, would you take two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Simple. this is instant fun. I mean, it, you, it's gonna take you longer to get the freaking trash can out of the shipping box than it is gonna get it on the sled. So unless you're like me at Christmas time, then shit's flying and <laughs> boxes are getting tore open and stuff. But let's close the hood and fire it up. Let's, let's, hear, uh, let's hear what it sounds like now. I'd say it's throatier. It's way throatier. Yeah. Way, way it's throatier. It's got a cooler sound yep. to it. And it's sitting up in the air and not on the snow. Yep. Yep. It's it hard to... And we know it sounds different once they are down on the snow. And we've already figured that out on the other trash cans that we've tested out. So, but I, just, I, I automatically noticed throatier. Yep. Definitely throatier. A little bit higher pitch sound to it too. Some guys have been concerned about the decibel levels as far as getting in trouble with the DNR. Myself, I'm not concerned. No. Good way we ride. We're not out just freaking rap every direction we go. I mean, we're respectful. Let's run the lake. <laughs> yeah, let's run the lake, you know, but we're not, I mean, we haven't had any issues with any of our triple pipes over the years, but where we ride is a little bit more laid back. And But it's not as loud as the 650s. 650s are definitely louder, but more CCs, you know, bigger engine, smaller engine. So now you guys have heard it. That's the comparison. I will start making these very soon too. All my fixturing is just about done for the 650s now. I've just been trying to come up with the best setup and part of it became into the bracket setup on there so that I could have a removable bracket off the back of the can because the box was gonna to be too long for shipping. It, it was between the can and the bracket to mount to the stock mount in the sled. It was getting the box so big and then the shipping would get expensive. So I had to come up with a way to make the mounting bracket bolt on and off of the pipe too. So. So we can keep the shipping cost down. I don't want you guys to spend $200 on a pipe, then $75 to ship it to your doorstep. That'd be ridiculous, you know? So that's the things you gotta think about is what size box am I gonna ship this thing in too? So if I can make the box smaller to get that shipping price down, it benefits everybody in the long run. So this XLT one though, that's a compact, a compact setup though. That thing's gonna be in a nice small box. Shipping should be really reasonable on them. These still ended up a little bit bigger because of the longer down tube on them, so, but. That's awesome, they sound great. Um, yeah, I think that's it. What do you think, Mike? I think you should keep the bush cold. I agree.